Welcome to the introduction of ProWalker CPU Beta. For short, I will be referring to ProWalker CPU as PWCPU or simply PW. PWCPU is a SketchUp extension meant to be a companion product to SU Podium version 2.6 and or Podium Browser. PWCPU employs a ray tracing method called path tracing, which is the most physically accurate method of 3D rendering. Typically, path tracing applications are computationally intense and therefore slow, but with the use of the Intel Denoiser, PWCPU's path tracer is very fast. PWCPU is a CPU-based application that works on Windows or any Mac, Apple Silicon or Intel. The ray tracing engine is based on Intel's Osprey path tracer. Like SU Podium, PWCPU is for SketchUp. You do need SketchUp 2022 or 2023 or beyond. Let's open this modified Barcelona model for a quick look at how PWCPU works. As with SU Podium, first the surfaces and materials are exported to the rendering engine. Next, the rendered scene opens and becomes clearer and clearer depending on the number of samples used. We can see here the final result using a 30 sample rate. You can move your camera inside the rendered scene and the rendering will get updated in almost real time. SketchUp camera can be synchronized with the PW camera so you can change scenes in SketchUp and PW will be updated immediately. as you see here. I'm switching different scenes in SketchUp and updating the PW rendered scene. Now let's take a look at the render settings. The most important value is the sample rate. Path tracing uses random samplings of rays of lights to gradually calculate a final image. The higher the sampling rate, the higher the quality of the final image. However, due to the excellent denoise built into Osprey, often the sample rates can be 30 or lower. Let's drop the sample rate to 20 to speed up the rendering. Let's move the PW camera and you can see when I do that the sampling starts over again. There will be cases where you need to increase the sample rate to increase the quality of the final image. Let's take a quick look at the light settings. In this case, we only have sun and sky lighting. By moving the physical slider, I can increase the sunlight intensity and brightness. Now let's add HDRI or IBL background lighting. These are high dynamic range images that are used for lighting your scene. I'm going to switch this from simulated sky and sunlight to HDRI. Here is how I can rotate the HDRI background. The physical slider will increase or decrease the HDRI light exposure. In this case, I'm going to decrease the physical slider. You can also change the exposure and gamma slider effectively. Now let's save the final image in PNG format. I use a 1920 by 1080 resolution. When you save the image, the sampling starts over again and then saves a file. And here it is.